Now on BBC One, Patrick Moore with The Sky at Night. Good evening. For this programme, we are going right back to Mars, in particular, Mars Global Surveyor. The probe still going round the red planet and sending back superb pictures, such as this one, of Martian weather systems. And Mars is now coming nicely into view. It will be at opposition next June. It still shows a slight phase. It won't do at opposition. And oppositions don't happen every year. Here are the paths of Earth and Mars. This was the situation in early 1999. The three bodies lined up, Earth in the middle, therefore Sun and Mars on opposite sides of the sky, and Mars was then at opposition due south at midnight. One year later, Earth had come back to its starting point. Mars, moving more slowly in a larger path, hadn't had time. Therefore, Earth had to catch Mars up, so to speak, and did so, or will do so, only in June this year and therefore the average interval between oppositions is 780 days. And that means there were oppositions in 1999, 2001, and 2003, but not in 2000 or 2002. And next June, the position will be like that, another opposition. Also, not all oppositions are equally favorable because the path of Mars is much less circular than ours. At some oppositions, Mars can come within 35 million miles of us, which is about 150 times as far away as the Moon. This June, the opposition distance will be 42 million miles, which is fairly good, but not the best. Also, the apparent size of Mars varies wildly. At maximum, more than 25 seconds of arc. At minimum, only three and a half. And this year, maximum size just over 20 arc seconds. Well, when Mars in the opposition, telescopes show a great deal. I made these sketches um, last time Mars was in opposition in February 1999 and see there the dark markings. Those, of course, are south at the top. Well, last month we took a global view of Mars. Now it's time to go into more detail with MGS, Mars Global Surveyor, and, of course, with Dr. Peter Catamo. Welcome back, Peter. Thank you, Patrick. Um, can you give us a brief summary of what MGS has told us? Yes, and I suppose the best way to do that is to use one of its own maps. And this is the one I've chosen is this rather nice topographic map drawn up by Global Surveyor's MOLA instrument, Mars Orbiting Laser Altimeter. Uh, the blue shades are the low ground, and you'll see that the northern hemisphere we now know is relatively low. The impact basin Hellas at bottom left is extremely deep, and the very prominent red area of Tharsis towards the right of the image cut by the deep canyon of Valles Marineris. So we notice a, a distinct difference between the two hemispheres. Southern hemisphere is high, the northern hemisphere is low. Moller has shown us that the southern hemisphere is rough, the northern hemisphere is smooth. We know the slopes are much lower in the northern hemisphere, and we also now know from the gravity data that the crust is thinner in the north, only about 40 kilometers thick, whereas in the south, it's about 70 kilometers thick. So that is the sort of basic picture on which all the detailed information can be sort of pasted on. Well, let's begin, shall we, with the, the polar ice caps, under observation for a very long time, and what has MGS told us about the polar caps? Well, an awful lot, Patrick. We, we have not only images, but topographic data and so on. But here, probably the best way to introduce is to show two images of the polar caps. One taken, the one on the left in March 1999, and the one on the right in January 2001. And if you look extremely carefully, you'll see that there's slightly more ice towards the bottom of the picture in the left-hand image than there is in the right, as there's a slightly yes. more intense ice covering. So there is a variation in the ice cover in those two years, something we've never observed yeah. before in this detail. But I suppose the, most, the two most obvious features of those images are the very deep Chasma Boreale, that great indentation in the left-hand side, which is a very deep valley, and then the dark swirling valleys, which we now know are a characteristic of indeed of both caps. And it's in those swirling valleys in which there is no ice that we have these very interesting polar layered deposits, which must tell us an awful lot about the history of Mars in recent millennia. Now, 
as the global surveyor craft went over the poles, not only did it take images, it also looked at the topography with the molar instrument. And we have here our two very first profiles of the polar region, the North Pole at the top, the South Pole at the bottom. And you'll notice one of the characteristics of both poles is they're elevated above the plains on either side. And particularly clear in the top image, the North Pole, is that the plains on either side of the pole actually slope down towards the pole, which would be a natural way for any fluid, like water, to move towards the polar regions. And you'll see that in both profiles, Mola shows that there are troughs separating ridges. Uh, so they are punctuated by troughs. And the troughs are dark, the ridges are light, and the lightness of the ridges, and this extends out for several hundreds of kilometres from both caps, are presumably covered in frost. Um, what about the thickness of the frost? Well, the frost clearly is rather thin. Um, here we have some dunes. Now, there are extensive dune fields around both poles, and this is one of the dune fields around the northern pole, and you'll see here that the dunes, by and large, are relatively bright. They're actually coated in frost. It's sand or dust coated in frost. But you'll see some dark splodges distributed more or less throughout the image, and that is the dark sand of the dunes beneath beginning to show through the frost. And bearing in mind that image was only taken in early spring, it means that the frost must be extremely thin for the underlying dunes to have been revealed so quickly. And indeed, uh, that's also confirmed by this image, which is a picture of the edge of the polar cap. And you can see there that the, in the bottom part of the picture, you see the thin ice coating um, fading away and dust being blown in a streaky kind of way off the mm. layered deposits surrounding the pole which form the right-hand side of that image. What about the layered deposits themselves? Um, by Martian standards, obviously, they are very young, but what else has MGS told us about them? Well, we know for a start that they extend for about 1,000 to 2,000 kilometres um, from each of the poles. We also know that, at least in the southern hemisphere, they overlie the ancient crater terrain, though they're therefore younger than that ancient crater terrain. Yes, indeed. And we know, as you can see in this image, um, that they're made up of alternating light and dark layers. Uh, some layers are thicker than others. Uh, representing perhaps period, longer periods of deposition or deposition of coarser material. And indeed, in that image, the bottom image, you can see quite clearly that the angle at which the layers meet each other is quite different. Yes. And when you get angular disconformities of that type, it implies that what it, whichever the older set of layers have been eroded, possibly tilted, and then another stack of layers deposited on top at a, a different angle. So not only do we know that the layers are very abundant, of different thickness, of different resilience, but they've also at times been eroded, and then other layers deposited on the top. So we're getting the sort of geological picture of how these are built up and then torn down. Yes, but how thick are these deposits? Well, we now know that in the southern hemisphere, the deposits are between one and two kilometres thick. But they're considerably thicker in the north, perhaps as much as five or six kilometres thick. And the reason for the, this difference is probably that there is a preferential accumulation of north polar deposits when the atmosphere of Mars is laden very heavily with dust. So you're getting thicker deposits formed in the north at the present time. But of course, the, the wobble of Mars, Mars's axis, what we call precession, will change that over millions of years. And it could be that other times in Mars's history, the reverse yeah. has been true. Well, we've learned a great deal about the polar caps. Um, what else? Well, some of the images that we now have provide landscapes that I've never seen, certainly on the Earth or elsewhere in, in the solar system. I mean, here's a, a picture to start with. These, this goes to the other pole, to the south residual cap. And you'll see here, again, there is layering, but there's some very peculiar features. At the bottom left there, you see an extremely smooth, depressed area with some rather curved um, mesas, uh, remnants above it, you'll see some elevated areas catching the sun to the right of that image. And clearly there, we've got the stripping off of the layers into most bizarre shapes. And whether this is due to the wind or the collapse of the surface beneath by the melting of ice is at present not terribly clear. Here's another picture. Um, this one is of some absolutely magnificent yeah. holes in the Martian surface, depressions, which can play some very odd tricks on the eye. Sometimes they look like holes and sometimes they don't. <laughs> but these, this is a very, very smooth surface, 
and on the original image you can see lots of little polygonal shapes on that which are this very similar texture to what we get in the tundra regions of earth um, which is interesting but you see those pits are extremely numerous uh, we've never seen these before because we've never had images of this resolution and they're obviously formed by the collapse of the ice that is holding the layered deposits together so we've got all sorts of processes operating to change these deposits and there's plenty of ice there and ice can mean water and what evidence is there peter of past liquid water upon mars i mean seas lakes oceans even there's a fair bit but i think before we we look at some of the images the point must be made that um, most people who've been looking for water on Mars are either looking for something that looks like a river or for layers because layered rocks on the Earth are only ever formed or largely only formed either under the sea yes. or in lakes and if we see lots of stratified rocks uh, it usually implies that you've had some yes. kind of water deposition but stratified rocks can form from volcanic eruptions yes. for instance just layering material down ballistically so we have to be a little bit careful yeah. but having said that if you take a look at this synoptic image of a, of a large impact crater called Holden in the southern cratered highlands lovely picture that gorgeous picture uh, and we had never suspected that if we had blown up that little square towards the southwest corner we would see what you now see in this image which is a pit completely made up of layered rocks these could be sedimentary rocks, they might be volcanic rocks, they might be a mixture of the two, but we really hadn't expected. I think if you'd asked me the question 10 years ago, what would we see in a high resolution image, I would say something like the lunar impact breccias, very brecciated rocks, certainly not these stratified rocks that we saw in Newton Crater. I think I did ask you from the current lab. <laughs> you did. <laughs> so things have moved on. Uh, and in fact, that particular kind of image is not confined just to that one crater. Let's look elsewhere. Um, we've got here, I think it's the area of Arabia Terra, if yeah. I remember rightly, um, an area which you can see as a feature from the Earth in a telescope, as you well know. I do. And that isn't simply a smooth plane. Global Surveyor has shown us that it is actually made up of huge piles of layers made up into, into valleys and elongated ridges into a very complex pattern. And these layers could, and they certainly look as though they might have been laid down in some kind of lakes uh, in ancient times on Mars. We're not entirely sure when. Are features of this kind common in other parts of Mars? Well, they're much more common than we thought. Certainly, if you'd asked me that question a year ago, I'd have said they're probably quite unusual. But in fact, we have images like this one. Uh, this is the crater known as Becquerel. It's another large impact crater. And you can see there a whole plethora of layers, and indeed in this case, interestingly, cut by fractures or faults, which indicates that the crust of Mars has actually moved since the layers were laid down. And, and, and the main areas that we've found this layering in over a wide range of latitudes is in the walls of craters, in mounds on the crater floors, and in the walls of some of the channel systems. And it seems quite probable, since so many of these occurrences occur in big impact craters, that at some time in the distant past, those craters acted as collecting grounds for lakes, and the layers were possibly laid down very quietly there. You know, I cast my mind back now to, to Viking. How long ago that seemed? The 1970s. And Viking sent back images of layered rocks inside the Valleys Marineris, that great canyon. Uh, what has MGS added to that? Well, it's added... A, a, a considerable amount in fact there was uh, there was quite a flurry of activity quite recently when a group of workers um, revealed some pictures of layering in the, in the system now let's just remind ourselves of what it looks like to start with this is a an image built up by putting molar topographic data on, a, on an image and you see the, the central part of the canyon system there in places what nine or ten kilometers deep and it's in the walls of that canyon that we have some very interesting rocks indeed. Now look at this image. This is an image of Candor Kazmar, a part of the Valles Marineris where it widens out and has a less linear pattern to it. And there's a little box on the floor of Candor Kazmar. And when we look at that in the high resolution MGS oh. view, you see completely unexpected, a whole mass of sort of tables, stacked up tables of layered rocks, um, hundreds upon hundreds of them, each about, what, between 10 and 30 metres thick. And so 
there was a, a bit of flurry of activity in, in the NASA press release uh, halls when it was suggested these could be older than the canyon system, pushing water on Mars way back in time before the canyon existed. But these seem to have been largely discredited and we now think that those layers have actually partially infilled the canyon. And the general view is that such layering may have been formed when perhaps ice or rock barriers dammed parts of the Valles Marineris and huge lakes formed into which the deposits accumulated. Well, there seems no doubt now that there was a great deal of water upon Mars in the, in, in the remote past. What about the chance of liquid water more recently? Well, that's a sort of very interesting mm -hmm. question. Uh, and until quite recently, I said there was very little, but that's now all changed. Um, this picture here is, it was the starting point of, a, of another hastily brought together NASA press conference. This is a, a crater known as Newton, and there is a, a much smaller crater on its floor, and an image was returned by Mars Global Surveyor's high-resolution camera, and it's this image here. And in the walls of that small crater, there are some very sharply defined gullies. They start off broad in the upper part of the walls, and they narrow downhill. There are no impact craters, no signs of degradation. They seem to be very young indeed. And other images have come in subsequently. Look at this one here. And this is the bottom part of a similar gully where you can actually see its debris fan. So something has actually come down the gullies. And the obvious method by which something comes down the gullies is it's washed down. And the notion is that perhaps these are water-cut gullies the water having been on the surface of Mars in very recent times. You get a rather nice scale there. You could almost imagine skiing down it if there was slow there. It looks just like a terrestrial, the bottom of a terrestrial valley. These um, features are not just confined to one or two places. They're found even in high latitudes. Here, for instance, is one of these peculiar polar pits. And the high resolution picture of that little um, area up to the top right is this image here. It's Gorgonum chaos as it's known and you see a scalloped wall to the side of the of the chaos area you see these very sharply defined gullies now interestingly nearly all of the gullies form on slopes that face away from the sun now normally if you had a very cold planet and you wanted water you would look for it on the slopes that face the sun yeah. and it's completely the reverse so it's got people's cerebral regions wearing about trying to find an explanation and that the only thing that's come up so far is the notion that there is perhaps half a kilometer down beneath the surface of Mars some water that's held back by ice and only when the pressure of the water forces the ice to break can it break out onto the surface and escape. This is purely speculative, it, it may not be true but it does give us cause for hope that there has been water flowing on Mars in quite recent times. And therefore, there could have been life, there could still be. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Mars is always doing the unexpected. And you know, Peter, I cast my mind back to an earlier sky at night when we didn't even know what the dark areas were and how much we've learned since then. And MGS still going round. And before long, I think we'll find out if there is or was any trace of life there. So, Peter, thank you very much. Patrick. Then the newsletter time. If you want your newsletter, send your stamped addressed envelope to this new letter number 81, the sky at night, BBC TV, London W12 70S. Our website, www.bbc.co.uk slash sky at night, or CFAX page 620. And so, until next month, good night.